Science, morality a prerequisite to real spiritual freedom? Yes, it is a prerequisite. Just as disease is a prerequisite to health. Disease is a prerequisite to health? Yes. It is. What do you mean by prerequisite? A prerequisite is something that you would go and acquire. What your existent state is cannot even be called a prerequisite because you already have it. You already are it. But to see it, is it not a cleansing process? Is it not a cleansing process? The cleansing so is the prerequisite. The, Don't the, they have their values? The cleansing is the prerequisite. Yes. The dirt is not. There is the a difference. Is somewhere following the moral path can be a diligent decision, right? Are you talking about following yes. it or cleansing it? Following the moral path is obviously self cleansing. So that means you do not really know what morality is. Self cleansing. What do you mean by self cleansing? Suppose somebody. What is the self? From where does it come? The self itself is morality. How can morality then clean the self? The self is the dirt that morality accumulates in you. Morality is the self. Hmm. Hmm. Then how will morality clean the self? There are certain idioms in certain religions which have been experienced by others. Forget about this. What like is the self? the truth or wait, say wait. being honest. Don't have their values. What do you know about the truth? How can you tell the truth? That is being in language. Has anybody ever been able to tell the truth? No, it can't be. Obviously, then what made you utter this? Or at least being truthful in language. Is lang Does language have anything to do with the truth? Not telling a lie to one's parents. Do you know the truth that you won't tell the lie? Something that is relatively true or... There is nothing called relative truth. When you are talking of Vyavahar, who is it who acts? Who is it who behaves? Hmm. Who is it who behaves? That realization is obviously beyond language. If, the, if, if, if that realization is not there, then what does Vyavahar or language behavior have anything to do with the truth you can keep speaking all the nice things and be causing great harm to yourself and everybody and that's what happens to moral people they think that they are doing good and with all their nice intentions have you not heard that the road to hell is paved with good intentions that's the ultimate satire on morality. With all your good intentions, you keep marching towards hell. First thing all of these people here have said is that the truth cannot be touched, cannot be seen, cannot be heard cannot be expressed, it's ineffable. But the first thing that a moral mind tells himself and everybody else is tell the truth. Nonsense. You know nothing about truth and you're talking of telling the truth. When you know what you mean by telling the truth, you mean by confirming to the usual standards of behavior. That is what is meant by telling the truth. Nothing else. Then how can it be a value? How can it be a value? How can it be important? When I look at you, I will speak to you if I love you, that which will help you. If I really am speaking from love, then I will administer you medicine, not facts. Or will I? The 
action of love is to heal it is not to supply facts what do you mean by telling the truth when i am dealing with you it is not at all my job to tell the truth and engage in that kind of impossibility my job is to heal and the healed mind then moves into the truth by itself nobody else can tell you the truth somebody else can heal you and then you will move into the truth but the moral mind is such an arrogant mind that it thinks that truth is something that you can carry in your pocket or carry on your tongue and deliver to the other the moral mind cannot surrender it is haughty and thinks that it is above everything else stay less in contact with what you very well know corrupts and contaminates you you will not even know when all that will start dominating you you will not even know when all that will become the substance of your mind and you'll start calling all that your own you will start believing that this is what you are thinking the mistress of the word will become your personal suffering and you will say it is my suffering when it was just the mischief of the world the falseness of the world will become your own personal falseness it's almost like getting an infection from somewhere everything has its own place in existence in the same way morality has everything which has got its place maybe i understand the rules of morality but i cannot understand the rules of existence which has yes. because morality is crude so the crude mind can easily understand it hmm. understanding is not a proper yeah. word but the crude mind can assimilate it yeah. spirituality is subtle and offers you no support really you cannot claim that you know spiritual principles because there are no spiritual principles but there are moral principles and you can know moral principles so you feel good excuse me sir uh, when you're saying moral principles basically you mean ethos mm-hmm. that which is written in the scriptures no not at all doctrinated no not at all no scriptures ever contain any principles like the call of conscience what is that morality of course so that is also a doctrine no never the scriptures so never talk the scriptures never talk of conscience show me one scripture which talks of the virtues of conscience scriptures talk of atma not antaratma no scripture talks of the virtues of being conscientious your scriptures are basically interpretation in language, language no it is not at all an interpretation language anybody knows that antaratma is not the same as atma and consciousness is not the same as consciousness but what when in the gita krishna is saying vishnu sanam vasudevas me pandavanam dhananjaya as the, as i am in 
as I am in Vasudev, so am I in Pandavas Dhananjaya himself. Hmm. So there he is talking about transcending the, the self, the so called self. So there is, there is morality in this. So that is transcendence, right? Transcendence of what? The self. The body. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the body, body consciousness. So when you are talking of transcending the body consciousness, then you cannot talk of yourself as the son of somebody, and hence you cannot talk of not lying to your parents. Yeah. So do you see how deeply morality is ingrained in our minds? That on one hand we are talking of Krishna, and on the other hand we are talking of not lying to the parents. So actually, what I meant was the consciousness call. There is no call of Atma, there is only the call of conditioning. Okay, that when Krishna says that as I am in myself, so am I in you and so am I in the rest of the world. He obviously means that the body does not mean anything. And then how can parents matter? When the body does not mean anything. Do you see the inconsistency? How? In the same breath, we talk of being truthful towards parents and then we quote the Gita. How can somebody quote the Gita and still assign virtuosity to the family structure? Krishna is all the time saying the family does not matter. And the family is the supporting pillar of your morality. To be with Krishna is to be totally beyond morality. Krishna does not bother at all about the family. In fact, he is getting Arjun to slaughter his family. So, morality is smart enough that the same family has Krishna in one of the rooms. In fact, if the family really wishes itself well, it should banish Krishna from its living space. Krishna is dangerous. What if some child of the family someday suddenly awakens and realizes what Krishna really stands for? What would happen to the family then? Then Mama would look at Ladu Gopal and say, you little rascal, I didn't know your true colors. Do you know how dangerous Krishna is? To really know him is to annihilate yourself. Your ways of living, your relationships, nothing can stand the fire of Krishna. That's why you will never really go close to Krishna. You will have an image of Krishna and keep worshipping it. But you will never really go close to Krishna because Krishna will destroy you totally destroy you. My basic structure is morality. Of course. And Krishna goes in all ways against every sense of morality there is. Back home in that little book, Exactly the same words are there, and cramming of every single word happens quite frequently. I mean, I'm trying to understand with, I mean, with my head down. We have co-opted Krishna. We have yes. And if somebody says Krishna is fire, we will say no. I have a nice home and I have a nice book and I meet him every morning. Chubby cheeks. Yes. Fond of milk and sugar. This is because we are not close to him, that is why we worship him. Of course, of course. 
the worship is a cunning method to keep him away take our obeisance and remain in that temple don't violate my house so don't ask me to immediately leave you'll have one day in the year <laughs> but to live by krishna that is extremely difficult for the ego is it one of the reasons that india is very close to krishna that is why india got no krishna hmm. and an american or a european got more of krishna than got india more. yes every action arises with a certain assumption and that assumption is morality so all my actions are solely based on morality so everything i do is the the walk that i walk the way that i talk yes of course even breathing is of like of course do you know when morality. when when you move into understanding even the cells of your body change your eyes change your facial expression changes <coughs> nothing remains the same the deeper your meditativeness is the deeper is even the physical change that comes to you your very breath changes it becomes more regulated on its own the way you walk your gait the contours of your voice its modulation everything changes the way you sit the way you look the way you listen everything changes i'm prepared to say that even the chemical composition of your body changes tests are done to determine the presence of this and that in your body changes you will see that it has changed it if the changed. if the if the thing of your mind has changed that's why it's a total annihilation so of course that does not mean that you will start looking totally different you remember bullesha in one of the camps he was singing mainu kaun pachade main kuch ho gayi aur he was not just uh, presenting a metaphor to us it actually does happen you are no more recognizable you become somebody else So Krishna is doing this. He will kill. He will kill. You will become somebody else. That somebody else is you. That who is the other for you right now is the real you. And that is also the foundation of all bhakti. That the other is the real me. I am false. The other, you. is the real me and hence i want to come to you i want to leave myself behind i want to come to you that is bhakti i am so false that the real me has become an other for me and hence i only worship the other now i worship you the you is my own essence but it has become so distinct from me that i dare not call it me i call it you i call it the other but my hope is that one day i will meet the other that is me
let us have faith. The means strives to the to become the other, but at the moment where the me is me. The me does not strive to become the other. The me is gladly, gladly in me. In me. The me is the entire universe of its being. It doesn't want to jump out of it. Mm. The universe offers a lot of security, hope. Many other things. So, what forces it to turn inward is again grace. You can't, there's no striving as such. It is. Turn outwards rather. In the language of bhakti, you are going out. Outward. In the language of gyan, you go yes. inwards. In bhakti, you go out. To the other. The other becomes very important in bhakti. You say, I am not important, you are important. Mm. 